Page 77, the trill. A trill is what we call an ornament in music. It enhances, it's a, something extra added on. There's a lot of different kinds of ornaments in music. In most cases, not all, in most cases all ornaments, including the trill, are optional. That is, you can leave them out. And when you first learn a piece, I recommend leaving out the ornaments. And then after you get the piece under your hands, then you can go back and add the ornaments. If there's an ornament you can't play very well, you leave it out. A trill in this piece, the purpose of doing it is the trill, so we can't leave it out. But still, let's get the notes without the trill first. Just the right hand. It's a 2-4 time, no sharps or flats, so we're in C major. And you're starting in the right hand. It's, they want you to use one. See, the, up above they write out the notes for the trill. It's just A trill is just two notes alternating. That's a trill. So we're going to use one on the G, and then the, the Bs, are, and then here. So we're in this position until you get down to the end of the second line, or the last measure, because now you're up here. We've moved here, and at the end you have this F sharp, and then, and then come back down. Just reach down with the thumb, and you have that. We're back in this position. And then you get down to the last line, you're here for the first measure, and then for the second measure on the trill, you're here. And we, we're ending it in this position. So we're moving around a little bit in the right hand. And the left hand, the left hand is your broken chords. That's a C and an E, and then a D and an F. Okay, just rock the hand back and forth, easy go. Then second line, third measure, you get treble clef. They up here. Still two and a one, and then a D sharp A, and then third line, you get treble clef back in the middle of the measure, so it can happen anywhere. Huh? You're here. Now your ear, your your ear, ear, your no. Then you come down to an E, and then reach up to here. This is an octave. And then the G. Last line, second measure here. Their fingering is good here. It's on the B flat, and then an A, and then an A flat F sharp. And they shouldn't have a problem using the thumb on a black key here because you're not playing any white keys. Just lift them up here. And then a G, and an F, and two four on the last one. Here. That's the left hand. And next I'd do the rhythm. Well, the rhythm isn't really a problem. Quarter notes and eighth notes. I think we can handle the rhythm. Let's add the trill. Here, again, I can't, I'm not a very good triller. I never have been. I suffer on this. I do the best I can. A trill doesn't have to be done real fast. It has to be even and controlled. Now there's a couple ways of doing You get an uncontrolled shake, which a trill is called a shake. You know, and that's where you just shake it. That's where it's uncontrolled, you just shake it. I don't care for those. I've never cared for them. I don't like the sound of them because you can tell some of the notes are weak or don't sound. It's uneven. It's blech. But then you have the controlled trill, which is rhythmic. And that's the one I always suggest you use. That's the one I use every time. You just have to figure out what the rhythm is. Here they've written the rhythm out for you. They're doing 16th notes. So it's one eanda, two eanda. One e and a two e and a. So if I go one, two, one and two and one e and a two e and a one e and a. Depending on how fast I can do that with thumb. And again, I'm just I'm doing this. I'm not holding a deal and trying to use the fingers so much as I'm just. It is kind of a shake a little bit, but it's it's, it's a rhythmic one. E. You should be able to do that on any of the fingers. There's all kinds of trill exercises, and there's several videos on YouTube that talk about how to learn trills. There's different ways of approaching it. I encourage you, if you're interested, go search them out and try those, their approach to learning a trill. You should do it in both hands. So it's like here. If I'm going to do that, I want to do it in left hand too. I'll just start on the same note. Whatever 
I do in one hand, I want to do in the other. So you got to develop both hands. So this is really all it is. So we're at one e and a two e and a one e and a two e and a one. Come up here. See that had that little ending on it. They can do that. Uh -huh. Technically, the trill line, and this is the second line last measure, that trill, that wavy line for the trill, it should not be over the 16th notes. The trill ended at the dotted quarter note. And when I get to the 16th notes, those aren't trilled, those are just played normal. Otherwise, you'd have to trill those. That. No, so the trill really ends right before the 16th notes there. Like so. They've written it out for you which makes it easier for you to understand what they want. But if if the, they hadn't written it out and that trill went all the way across, then I'd want to trill those 16th notes too. And then the going on. And then the last line. There you get two. One E and a two E and a one E and a two E. You've got to go twice as much. Now, People don't agree on how trills should be played. We will play this the way they're telling us to because they've written it out. But in most cases, I was taught in, the, in college, and what I have been following, what I taught my students, was in most cases the trill starts on the upper note, not the main note. Because you have the main note, which is the note provided, and you're, you're going to play two notes, you just play the next note up in the scale. Whatever the scale, whatever key you're in, in this case, it's an A because we're in a C major scale. We're using the white keys, so it's here and here. So that would be the notes involved, but I would start on the upper note. There's a one E and a two, like so. And I'd do that with all of these. I'd start on the upper note. But as I said, what they've written the notes out, so we'll play it the way they're showing. Dynamic wise, it's sort sort of soft. That's the right hand. I crescendo up a little bit there too. You have to decide, keep the left hand soft out of the way. You have to try. You don't have to go that fast. It's just I I tend to because there's a crescendo there in the end of the second line. Doesn't say how much to crescendo, just go up a little bit, maybe medium loud. It's the first note of the next line that you're after. That note right there. Then you come back down. And then the last line you crescendo again up to the next to the last measure. So it's there. And then stay loud there, or medium loud. You see the fingering there in the right hand at the end? That. And the two note slurs down up, down up. Like so. Let's try this together slowly to double check the notes and the rhythms. As far as the speed goes, it says fast, but that's your fast. And the notes you're playing in it determine that. When you got trills like this involved, 16th, that slows it down. So fast isn't the same for every piece. It depends on what's in it. So here. How fast can you play that? And that that's your fast for this piece. And another piece, the allegro or fast might be some other speed. I'll give us four counts. Now let's try this out very slowly together. I put the metronome on 50. So it's one e and a two e and a one e and a two e and you need to play it that fast, so work it up so you can get it to that fast and then play it with me. Let's see what happens. One, two, ready and go we end a one e and a
two off. 